Our next keynote session's topic is Succeeding in the Unprecedented Times, for which we have Mr. Prashant Ranganathan, CEO, PayU Finance Limited. Prashant is a serial entrepreneur with a proven track record of building mobile tech companies. He is responsible for driving the overall growth of PayU's credit business in India and its ambitious plans to become one of the largest digital lenders in the country. Uh, very good morning to you all. It's a pleasure to be here at the WIT Ignite event this morning. Uh, a very quick introduction. My name is Prashant Ranganathan. I am the uh, founder of PaySense and now the CEO of PayU Credit here in India. Um, just very quickly to kind of walk you through my own background. Uh, I founded PaySense, which is a consumer lending startup based here in Mumbai. Uh, back in 2015, and I ran it until a successful merger with PayU uh, earlier this year in Jan 2020. Uh, prior to PaySense, I was the head of product for PayPal Asia Pacific. Uh, so based out of Singapore, I looked after India, China, Southeast Asia, Hong Kong, Korea, Taiwan, uh, Australia, and Japan. Um, a phenomenal experience to look at uh, all the emerging payment trends across across the region uh, definitely gave me a very broad uh, set of experiences uh, that that I remember quite fondly. Uh, prior to prior to that stint, I was the head of product uh, and new ventures risk for uh, PayPal globally. Based out of San Jose, I worked for the chief risk officer for PayPal and uh, launched their. My claim to fame was I launched their consumer credit as well as their merchant credit business, which both of them are which uh, multi-billion dollar businesses now. Came into PayPal through an acquisition. I founded a company called Truby Security back in 2011, uh, which was acquired by PayPal. Prior to that, I ran another consumer, consumer communication startup, mobile communication startup called uh, SayNow, which I sold to Google. Uh, I'm a software engineer by, by training. Uh, started off my career at Microsoft uh, then went on to study uh, bioinformatics at Stanford before becoming an apprentice to Mark Andreessen. Uh, and then I've been a founder and a corporate employee uh, for, for various years since. Um, so way back when, grew up here in India. I was a, I was a defense kid. My dad flew for the Indian Air Force. Uh, so lived all over India before moving to Australia and then moving uh, to the United States for college. And full boomerang, I'm right back here um, and building uh, building now building pay you credit. Um, today, I actually wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about succeeding in unprecedented times and uh, truly what unprecedented times we live in, right? Uh, we just had the US uh, presidential elections. Uh, we are at a time where uh, we, we are truly in the middle of a, a pandemic uh, where global economies have come, uh, come down on their knees. Uh, millions of folks are out of work. Um, you know, economies, like I mentioned, have shrunk quite significantly. Uh, countries are in deep recessive state, sectors wiped out. Uh, there's no cure in sight, there's no vaccine um, to kind of uh, bank on. And uh, with lockdowns and martial laws becoming an almost everyday event in various parts of the world, uh, and with a multi year recovery, and you know, uh, as planned. I think these are, I would say, uh, undoubtedly unprecedented times. And, um, and this image uh, in front of you is, is truly a, a capture of, of the times we live in. Um, now, unprecedented times uh, also bring unprecedented opportunities. And I would much rather spend my, spend my next 20 odd minutes talking about how to A, survive unprecedented times and how to successfully navigate uh, some of these unprecedented times. So if you could move to the next slide. Uh, you know, before this imagery is quite powerful for me, um, a long time ago when, uh, when uh, I, was, I was just starting out my career, uh, and there were quite turbulent moments in my own, you know, in my own career. Uh, a, a mentor of mine shared this story with me. Um, he said, hey, look, have you ever been whitewater rafting? And many of us have. And I think whitewater rafting is a phenomenal adventure sport. Um, in whitewater rafting, uh, when the rapids are extremely choppy and quite, uh, quite uh, 
you know, quite volatile, it's the advice is that you pull your oar in and you hold on, right? You just navigate the, you just navigate the ride, you stay in the boat uh, or the raft. Um, and the, when the waters get slightly calmer, that's when you actually plan, that's when you put your oar back out in the water and that's when you paddle as, uh, you know, fiercely as possible. Uh, the reason why I bring up this is because the times we live in are quite similar, right? In the middle of all the choppiness, in the middle of all the, uh, all the change, in the middle of uh, everything that none of us have ever experienced, it is not a phenomenal time to put our oar out uh, and you know, try to paddle as quickly as possible because frankly, that effort is quite wasted. Um, and um, in at, you know, the worst case scenario is that you lose your paddle or you fall out of the raft. The best case scenario is you know, nothing happens. So the very first thing I would advise is that uh, in these unprecedented times, it's first important to kind of take a view on how to, uh, how to stabilize oneself. Um, and with that, let's go to the next slide. So I wanted to quickly share, you know, how I have looked upon my own life, both personal and professional over the last uh, 10 months or so now, um, and how I've looked to kind of find some stability. So in order to find stability, one first has to acknowledge that these are, these are tough times and these are, you know, definitely very trying times. Um, and so here are some experiences I wanted to share that might be relevant to all you ladies in the, in the audience as well. First of all, I think finding a routine. Uh, in the first days of work from home and, and, um, and, and COVID-19, all things COVID-19, I found myself doing everything uh, all the time. So I had no routine. I would wake up, I would get on the computer, then I would get on my phone. Uh, my kids were home, my wife was home, and uh, there, was no, there was no timing to anything. I would wake up whenever I would uh, work to late hours. The food uh, would come and go, would come to my desk and go. I would, uh, I would, I would give up on exercising. My sleeping habits had changed. Um, and very quickly, I found myself to be in a very unsustainable state. So the one, one first realization was, I think despite this being a tough time, just despite us being at home, despite us not having the same normal, you know, 9, 10 a.m. start times and 6, 7 p.m. Sh sh stop times, um, it's still very important to find a routine. Uh, and I think sticking to healthy eating, uh, you know, working hours, exercising and finding the right sleeping habits is all very important. Uh, I found myself in the early days treating this as a quasi work, quasi vacation uh, type of construct, which, uh, which definitely led to very poor results. And, but once I found myself back on a routine, slightly augmented, slightly altered routine compared to uh, you know, when I was actually going into the office, but uh, once I found that routine, I found it to be quite a bit more productive. So that's, the, that's one of the survival skills of, I think, surviving this uh, unprecedented time. The second is finding a new normal with family and, and the kids, right? So many of us have kids. Um, my kids are very young. I have a six-year-old and an eight-year-old. When they would see me at home, uh, especially uh, for extended periods, uh, they thought this was either vacation or weekend. And the routines around vacations and weekend is that there are no boundaries, right? So uh, kids are allowed to walk into the room, kids are allowed to have conversations, kids are allowed to interrupt, kids are allowed to be kids. Um, and uh, and uh, the, that, was, that was entertained in, in previous times. And uh, unfortunately, with uh, a work from home construct, that was not, that was not uh, working very well. To be honest, I think one of the first few things my wife and I did is we started to set some boundaries with, you know, where, you know, how we would, you know, deal with the kids. And for them, it's also quite new, right? They, they didn't understand what it meant to not go to school. They didn't understand what it meant not to be uh, being taught by a teacher. Uh, they didn't know what it meant to be home yet kind of uh, respect the, the spaces of their parents. So uh, we, we actually, you know, as young as they may be, we had to have a sit down with them and set those boundaries. We had to set dedicated times where we would spend quality time with them. Uh, and we set clear expectations as to when we would be parents and when we would need to remain professionals uh, so that uh, we didn't have any mishaps along the way. So finding a new normal with friends and, or sorry, with family and kids is actually very important. And I'm sure eight, nine months into this, many of you have also found your new normal. Um, 
So the third is around handling confined spaces. So I do a session called uh, Coffee, Coffee with Prashant, as narcissistic as that sounds. Uh, we, we do this every week and I invite some 20 odd folks from the company to actually come and uh, just on a Zoom call, you know, just share what they're going through, how they're thinking about their day, uh, you know, what are some of their challenges, uh, and, you know, mostly just have a chit chat, like, you know, like we would normally have if we were sitting in the office. Um, very quickly, I learned that many people would not turn on their video. And uh, I found this to be on initial days, uh, I found, uh, you know, the lack of empathy uh, in me resulted in me saying, hey, like, do these people not want to see me? Do they not want to kind of share, what, you know, their own, you know, their own world with me? Uh, they seem to be on mute on audio, mute on video, what's going on? Um, only I just kind of had the conversation, I said, hey, why, why, can't, why don't you most of you guys turn on your video? Um, and to that, I heard two things. One is uh, when people turned on their video, the video quality was quite bad. Uh, it was blurry. It would be it would be very disruptive because there was a lot of uh, you know background movement, um, and uh, also realized that the surroundings that people were in were not something they were extremely proud of to put in front of all their coworkers, right? So uh, I had a, had a nice study desk and a, and a quiet room, but many people didn't. So to recognize that was actually really important. Uh, I've had people say, hey, look, I'm in a, uh, I'm in a home with, uh, with my mother-in-law, with my father-in-law, I have kids. Uh, and, uh, you know, turning on the video would actually be disruptive, actually turning on the audio, uh, the amount of background noise would actually make for a really, you know, bad, bad conversation. So I'm going to leave myself muted on both. Uh, that was, that was, a, that was my first realization that, you know, not everyone has the same luxury of open spaces. A lot of people, especially folks in Mumbai, where, where most of our folks are, have confined spaces. And uh, those are confined spaces that are shared with a lot of people. So having a little bit of empathy, if you have, uh, if you have direct reports uh, who, are, who are dialing into your calls, uh, having a little bit of that empathy, developing a little bit of that empathy is really, really important. Uh, and if you're in one of those confined spaces, again, trying to find a way to kind of operate uh, in, those, in those spaces is, is gonna be very crucial uh, towards success. Um, the fourth um, was that, you know, initially I was obsessed with the news around coronavirus. Uh, so I would always be tuned in and I would be watching the spikes and I would be watching uh, the spread and I would be watching and fearing like all the, all, the, all the things that were reported in the media. Unfortunately, modern day media is, is actually uh, more favoring of spreading the bad news, right? So uh, very quickly you can go into a, into a mental spiral that, um, you know, just by hearing and observing the news. So then I said, well, it's important to be connected to the rest of the world and kind of consume news, but uh, it can't be, it can't be 24 hour news, right? So then I started doing only half an hour news a day. And that was more than enough to keep balance with where the world was and where, uh, where I wanted to be. Um, the fifth um, is around social versus physical distancing, right? So uh, I realized that in order for me to survive, um, I am an extremely social creature uh, and I needed to see people. Uh, I needed to be with people. I, I understand the risks and I understand the precautions one needs to take, but physical distancing is something I was, I was willing to take on. Social distancing never made sense to me. Uh, in fact, uh, there is no such thing as, you know, uh, a spread due to social interactions, as long as those social interactions have the right physical distancing uh, associated with them. So I, I think whoever coined social distancing as the as the term uh, should have thought that through a little bit more, uh, because it's physical distancing that's that's truly important. And it's also important to acknowledge the difference between the two. There is no reason not to see people. Uh, there's every reason to observe the right hygiene and distancing. Uh, with other people. So that was an early realization and then we, we were better off for it. Then I think the, the last but not least is that, you know, uh, we were very open in expressing our frustration, right? I think uh, uh, all of us need to find someone who can, who we can talk to, who we can express 
deeply like what we're feeling like all the frustrations of being home uh, i used to travel a lot for work and uh, and that was my break from uh, uh from being you know tied down at home uh suddenly we were all spending you know 24 hours a day with uh, with our families and that's that's good but that's also, also uh can be frustrating um and uh, for those, and I have many employees uh, and, a, and, a, and a fair few female employees who have come up and said, hey, I live, you know, for now, I've, you know, we've moved back to our in-laws home. I, I really want the office to open, not for any other reason, but because I just want to get away from my mother-in-law or I'm done making rotis. I need to get back into the office. I was writing Java code till yesterday and now I'm back to making rotis and that's not something I want to do, uh, you know, for a prolonged period of time. Just for that reason, you need to open the office. So just, just that expression of frustration and just knowing that others are going through something similar uh, kind of helps a lot in kind of just keeping that mental mental uh, mental balance, um, and then you know I've always been very solutions oriented. Uh, every time I, I kind of got bogged down with a problem, uh, I said, "How am I going to solve for it?" Uh, so keeping a positive mindset, uh, solving the problem at hand. Uh, so like whether that meant you know bringing a tutor home to help the kids with online schooling, or whether it uh, meant creating small bubbles where you know, uh, our families would interact with other families and it would be a safe zone in some ways, uh, similar to how the civil aviation is being built out again, um, was what we did. So these are some of my experiences around uh, surviving these unprecedented times that we're in, right? Um, but it's not just about survival, it's about, uh, it's about going beyond. So if you move to the next slide, um, one of the things I've always been uh, you know, advocating to my teams is about how you invest long and execute short, right? How you keep a very long-term focus um, and then you kind of spend your time executing in the short, but not losing sight of where, where you're headed. And like I mentioned at the start, uh, unprecedented times means unprecedented opportunities, right? We could fundamentally change our lives and the lives of our next future generation if we just uh, don't get bogged down, um, if we don't, you know, uh, if we can survive the, the, the unprecedented times and then we can succeed. So here are some things I wanted to share with you on how I have, I have thought about trends and how I have kind of been helping my uh, teams think more broadly about uh, succeeding in these unprecedented times. So if we go to the next slide, uh, some of the trends that I feel that can't be ignored, right? So for all the ladies in the audience who are thinking, uh, man, what are, what are some of the things that I could be taking advantage of? Uh, he says that these are un unprecedented times. Uh, what, are, what, is the, what is the solution to kind of like uh, taking advantage? First of all, like I said, survive it, then uh, and then uh, first acknowledge it, then survive it. And once you're in a stable place, then look to succeed. So let's let's look at a few of these, right? So first of all, digital acceleration. So the very fact that you're in technology uh, means you already have a leg up on 99.9% .9 of the population. Um, this is a time where digital acceleration and adoption uh, will far exceed anything else. I think we had demonetization in India, which was partially successful. But if you look at payments, uh, just post demon and payments through the COVID period, you will see that the payments, digital payments, uh, in the post uh, in the in the COVID period compared to the uh, post uh, post demon uh, kind of announcement is is fundamentally different, right? Post COVID, the acceleration, the digital acceleration. Uh, far exceeds anything else. Um, and typically when technology leads the way uh, in digital adoption, there's no turning back. So whether you're, uh, whether you're in health tech or you're in FinTech or food tech or e-com or you know, uh, any of the ride sharing or, you know, uh, or any of the technology uh, apps or technology services, uh, there is a, there's a fundamental lift in the tide, which will lift all the boats. Uh, so I think uh, if you're if you're not in tech, but you're a technologist, uh, I would say you know this is a great time to enter tech um, and stay in tech. The second is I think with with digital digital acceleration comes uh, a lot of digital data. Right, we lived in a world where uh, most uh, most of our uh, 
uh, work and life and engagement was very analog, right? We lived in a, in a very real world for very long periods of time. Um, and unfortunately that data is very hard to capture. Uh, but when, when things, the same things happen digitally, uh, whether that be food ordering or whether that be e-commerce purchase, whether that be, uh, you know, groceries or what have you, suddenly the amount of data that gets generated is unprecedented. So if you're in the, in the world of uh, data and analytics, the next few years are going to be phenomenal. And you're talking about a very, very large population, a very active consumer, a very tech savvy consumer uh, generating uh, tons of data. So the skills required to kind of harvest that data, process that data, drive intelligence on that data, drive decisioning on that data, all those jobs and functions will become that much more important in, in coming years. So if you've got a data background or data analytics background, this is a great time to further that uh, because those jobs and skills are gonna be that much more important. So that's what we see uh, even at PayU, uh, we're doubling down on the analytics, the amount of data we're collecting, the amount of like digital uh, you know, exhaust that is being generated is uh, is unprecedented. So uh, there's there's definitely going to be a need for analysts and data scientists and um, and you know and, you know and all the all the associated uh, skills uh, to manage this this amount of data. The the third thing is uh, as technologists, um, each of you will have to make a decision about. Uh, what's happening in the macro world, right? What are some of the emerging and what are some of the languishing sectors? So if you look at emerging sectors, um, you look at FinTech, for example, it is just, you know, it's a skyrocket time, right? It's like, a, it's, it's a, there are many rockets getting, getting off the ground right now. But at the same time, if you're in a, in the travel sector, or if you are in one of the sectors that has been really hard hit uh, during this time, um, you can only you can only imagine that the recovery will be that much that much longer as well. So I'm not saying you know if you're in travel you need to get out and find another job. I'm just saying if you are in travel um, and you're in tech, then maybe it's uh, it's not a bad idea to look at other sectors that have actually benefited, um, unfortunately benefited or fortunately benefited uh, from from these unprecedented times. Right. This is about succeeding in unprecedented times. So I think it's important to first find what are some of the macro trends that are here to stay. My prediction is that travel will take another year or two to even normalize to pre-COVID levels, which means growth in travel is, uh, is that much further away. So just, just think that through. Um, the fourth is around geolocation, right? We are, we are truly a, a global workforce now. I think, uh, especially in technology, um, I'm starting to hire people who are based in Vietnam. I'm hiring people who are in Singapore. I'm hiring people in uh, Bareilly. I'm hiring people uh, who are, you know, now want to work in Goa almost permanently. And, and I think that should be possible. And I don't think there's any reason for us to say, oh, you know, if you're not in Bangalore, or if you're not in Mumbai, or if you're not in Pune, then you're not welcome. Um, because I think one thing that we've learned, and it's almost impossible to unlearn, is that uh, when we hold technology jobs, those jobs are truly portable uh, and are not confined to a specific geolocation. Now, um, it's always great to have an office to come to. It's always nice to kind of be a part of a culture. It's always, it's good to enjoy things, but uh, it's not a be all end all anymore. I think there are, there are mixed uh, or there are different schools of thought on in terms of location. Uh, I'm very much a proponent of uh, work anywhere or a team anywhere construct. So that I think benefits this group significantly because you are truly now part of a global workforce. You don't have to work for a, a company that is within X kilometers from your home. You can work for a company on the other side of the planet. And, um, and that was always true in tech, but that is more true now than ever before. Um, I have a lot of our staff that has gone back to quote unquote their hometown, right? And uh, they've been in their hometown for the best part of the year. And I think that is, that is great because A, they are mentally a lot happier, uh, healthier, um, and B, they are also just uh, that much more productive because they're not spending all their time commuting into work or uh, or being frustrated by you know missing missing that 
uh, opportunity because it just happens to be in another city, uh, they're just capitalizing it uh, that much more. Uh, and last but not least, for those of you who are not in the workforce, who have stepped away because, you know, for various reasons, um, this is a phenomenal time to re-enter the workforce, especially if you're in tech, because the tech um, workplace has changed that much that you are, you can perhaps work from anywhere. Uh, if you have young kids at home, and many of us do, uh, you can actually work from close to where your extended family is. So, uh, you know, we can go back in some ways to the old world where, you know, we had, we had large families and, you know, the kids were part of large families. Um, and that also gave all of us an opportunity to kind of uh, you know, spend our times, you know, wisely at work. So I think if it's, if, if uh, some of those reasons were keeping you from being in the workforce, this is truly a, a good time to re-engage and, and come back because I think the flexibility is, uh, is definitely unprecedented just like the times are. Um, so these are some of the trends I'm observing. Uh, I do see uh, the women at PayU uh, being a big change agent. Uh, in fact, uh, they are they are uh, they are often far more resilient than uh, than many of us, uh, and and they kind of bring that really positive attitude, which uh, which is which is great from a uh, both from a diversity perspective, diversity of thought, as well as a diversity of um, of, uh, of the workforce. So I I think this is a phenomenal time. I, I invite all of you back uh, into the you know to kind of doing more. And uh, if there's any questions, I'm obvious obviously always available to take them. With that, I'll pause um, and, uh, and I'll thank you for your time and goodbye. Thank you, Prashant.